Welcome back, Crackers. Thanks for joining us this Thursday. We'll be with you in just a moment to talk about all kinds of work. Uh, If you're at work, thanks for joining us. Wow, I'm already seeing 182 people here. Thanks for joining us, y'all. Michael will be with us in just a moment. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Wisecrack Live. It is March 2nd, guys. We're in March now. Hot take. I think March March is the most depressing month of the year. Some people will say January or February. We can, we can talk why. I think March is the most depressing month of the year. If anyone wants to, I'm happy to do it. What's up to everyone in the chat? Glad you're here. Um, I was just back from giving an HJ to my landlord, because that's what you got to do these days if you want to get your lease renewed, supposedly. Um, but happy to be here. It's it's me and Michael Burns. I'm with uh, producer Henry, as always. No one else Hello. is here, just the two of us. Um, so yeah, what are we going to talk about today? Lots of stuff. We, we probably won't get to everything, but we're going to talk about work. We're going to talk about landlords. We might do some Harris holing towards the end today, if you don't know what the Harris hole is. Oh boy, are you in for a fun time. Um, But yeah, let me just make sure. Let's see. Yeah, so we'll talk about, I think we might quickly talk about the Dilbert guy. What an idiot. We'll talk about landlord tipping, four-day work weeks, little animation maybe, little unemployment stuff. Might even look at an article about how Florida Republicans are trying to ban the Democratic Party because they endorse slavery. Um, I am AI. I did see mention of that in the chat. I'm officially AI at this point. Um, an idiot didn't. But uh, excited to be here. If, you, if you're in the chat and you're like, oh, some people have green usernames. I want to have a green username because it's my favorite color. Uh, they have those because they are members. I'm just going to move some stuff around, friends. Don't, don't pay any attention. Um, the color changes drastically when I do this. 
Um, those people are members of of our channel, um, the the channel that you know you might know as Wisecrack. So if you're interested at all in having a green username, you could also be a member of the channel. You get some perks. Um, we are working on emotes, by the way. Uh, we're going to design a special Harris hole one along with some other things. So you get emotes, you get access to our discord server. Also, we have a Patreon. Some of you know this, um, but you can join that as well. We've talked about some new Patreon content coming and, and, you know, plans are afoot is all I will say. Plans are afoot friends to get some new Patreon stuff coming. Um, let's see. Sorry, guys. I'm just looking at the chat. Someone's, I don't see anyone behind me, so I don't know who are you talking about. Um, literally, I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, Vox can't get a green username on this account. I don't know who's, there's no one behind me, guys. I don't know what you're talking about. This is crazy. Um, let's see. Oh, member. I get it. I get what you're doing there. Uh, as always, we'll try to get to 666 today because it's fun. Um, I, oh, wow. Autofocus changed. It's almost like there's something going on, but there's not there's not um oh yeah and what's going on in the channel since we were last together let's see we had a video come out i think is it the friendship video i'm gonna open up it oh yeah yeah so yeah the last video that came out since we were all together it's our video on friendship social isolation the coolest part about that video for me has been that I mentioned the mall I used to go to growing up and it turns out a lot of people have also been to that mall. So I got to chat with some people about, um, oh, got to chat with some people about the Oviedo marketplace mall in Oviedo, Florida. So that's pretty fun. Um, but let's, oh yeah. And I always try to tell you what's coming out next and I always forget everyone. I'll tell you what we filmed yesterday. Film the video yesterday. It's kind of on the matrix and VR and why maybe we're at a point where we would want to blue pill it and just live in an alternative reality if we could have. We did a video a video coming out on public intellectuals and why we don't have them and why they're bad. We also filmed another video yesterday, which I already forgot. I already forgot what it was about. It must be that good, guys. It must be that good. Um, Dude Abide says it's 666 viewers. Well, I'll stop working and go to the nearest taco truck for lunch. I really like that. Good one, yeah. So, how'd you feel yeah. about the uh, Chat GPT video? I I liked it. Um, wait, the one, wait, you mean the one that we made? Yes, I liked it. I thought it was fun. Um, what people in the chat, you can let us know what you thought of the Chat GPT video. I think it's fun to do something fun every once in a while. I thought it was fun to explore the GPT thing in real time rather than speculating about it. Why not just Why not just do it? Um, Josh is finally getting to catch us live. So that's awesome. Adam, I know the brown spots there. I'm aware of it. You know, I don't know who's, yeah, someone said they're getting two faces, but I've, again, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, someone said, how old are you? You look so young to know about stuff. My age has been established. Um, I'm not going to say it, but it's been established. If you go back in wisecrack live lore, if you go into the archives, my 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 age gets uh, clearly established. <laughs> stuff stuff of Nicholas. I very much like that comment. G hint said GPT video worried me as an artist for sure. Um, yeah, there's stuff to worry about. I mean, I, yeah, the GPT thing. I don't know. It's it's a fun technology. It's not, I think it's both. This sounds weird. I'm going to say something that sounds contradictory. I think the GPT thing is both not nearly as good as the people who want us to be scared think that it is. And I think it's not nearly as dumb as I am 666. Letter W, that is wrong. And that's, you're bullying. I'm getting bullied in the chat by a Wisecrack member. You are allowed to bully me if you have a green username. If you don't have a green username, you're not allowed to bully me. Um, but I also think like people who think the GPT is and, and sort of machine learning algorithmic stuff like that is useless are also missing the point because it can do a lot of stuff and it can respond to things really interestingly. Um, someone said, what are you drinking? I'm just drinking a sparkling water, the, the Trader Joe's brand. Um, water gets kind of boring. Brock Vick is here and says, hello to the dopest corner of the internet. Thank you for being here. Eddie says, it's just another art tool. Um, Adam H said, did we not have a stream on your birthday? We did, guys. 
I streamed on my birthday this year. If you've ever wondered or been worried that I'm not committed to you all, I think the fact that I streamed on my birthday really, really says that. Um, I'm 312. I went to school with David Hume. 100%. That is true. Um, thank you for the positive comments on the GPT video. Letter W, it's fine. Again, you're allowed to bully if you're a member. Because again, I think someone basically just said this in chat. That's how capitalism works. Um, you're allowed to treat other human beings like shit if you pay for it. Um, also, we'll talk about this maybe a little more later. I think it's funny that in the isolation and friendship video, I use the word comrades. And there were some really funny comments that were like, he just said it. They're finally admitting that Wisecrack is a Marxist cell. He's using code language to activate the Marxist super soldiers. And yeah, I mean, yeah, that's it. Figured it out. So congrats to all those people. So speaking of videos uh, and the channel Wisecrack, which you're currently watching, um, we have a new, sorry, we got some comments. We got some some comments on videos. We started this segment last time. It's called Comment Corner. Um, oh, and Outright Tiny, please don't feel bad about canceling your membership. It's totally fine. And again, I think with things like being a member of the channel and joining our Patreon, it's a cool thing to do if you have the money to do it. But if you don't, that is fine as well. So there you go. Um, but let's do Content Corner. Content Corner. Did I say content? Comment Corner, guys. Comment Corner is when we look at some comments from some videos. Um, it's a new segment. We'll have a theme song. Goes comment corner. I don't know. Someone should make a theme. Also, if any of you are musicians or, or can make things, if you want to make a theme song for any segment we do or anything like that, we should do that. Also, you know what we should do, Henry? Remind me to do this later. Maybe you can put it in the chat. We should make an email address. We should make like a uh, wisecrack live at Gmail thing. Yeah. So if anyone, so people can send stuff directly to that. So let's do that. Um, we're not going to do it now, guys, because we're, we're we're streaming, but we're going to set up an email address as well. But all I'd say is I would love some theme songs. Uh, and I know some of you are designers. If you, anyone wants to make graphics for any of the segments, we would just love it. So there you go. Um. So comrades, let's look at some some comments. Um. The first set of them are from the chat GPT video. And some of these relate to the fact that the first video, the chat GPT made, if you haven't watched the video, come on, watch it. Um, but not now. Also like the stream. I haven't said that yet. Uh, I'm going to say this. If it's your first time here, I'm going to ask you to like the stream quite a few times. Um, why am I going to ask you to do that? Because we live in hell. And if not enough people like the stream, then YouTube will stop showing it to other people. If they stop showing it to people, people will stop coming to this. If that happens too much, the numbers will go down. If the numbers go down, people that work above me are going to say, we probably shouldn't do this anymore. And then we'll have to stop doing it. And that would suck. So there you go. Okay. Um, someone wants to use Hotmail instead. I will say no. Outlook, no. Gmail, got to do it. Okay, so here's some comments. Uh, this is from the AI video. And the first script, when I told GPT to make a wisecrack video, it made a video that was titled like, why majoring in philosophy will help you have a career in tech, which was, <laughs> this was pretty funny. Um, so here's, oh, we're currently we're at 369. That's nice, times three. Um, first comment, it says, yeah, but keep liking. As a designer, getting into philosophy alienated me from the tech industry. I kind of, it's a really funny comment. Um, but don't unlike the stream to like it again, guys. I know there's a temptation, but yeah. Um, as a designer, getting into philosophy alienated me from the tech industry. I used to think it's a part of the job to sit in meetings and discuss the color of a button or the left or right placement of an image. Now I sit in meetings wondering what the meaning of meeting is and why is this not an email? That's very real. That's very real stuff. And I mean, this makes me think, so I kind of want to write a book. I'll tell you guys the idea. And I guess this means you could steal it, but it also means that I have proof that I'm saying this idea here. And, and then this is a timestamp stream. But like, I want to write a book called something like why philosophy will ruin your life. Because there's this tendency in certain schools, whether it's people that are obsessed with like stoicism or that whole fucking uh, school of life thing by that guy whose name I forget, Alain de Botton, um, which I think is trying to use philosophy as faux intellectual self-help. But I think in many ways, really diving into um, 
philosophy, philosophical thought, all the shit might make your life worse in that sort of like John Carpenter. He lives. They live. Why did I just get that wrong? The movie's called They Live, right? Sorry, guys. I don't know why I'm I'm running a little slow today. Um, but, in, you know, it's like it's like the they live glasses where philosophy can help you see how much everything sucks. So in this comment, this person saying they went from being able to sit in meetings just like this is normal. We're going to discuss the color of a button and da, 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 da. And then you start thinking a little more critically and you're just like, this is stupid. Why are we here? Why are we doing this? Why isn't this an email? Why do I have to work like this in general? Why is there a hierarchical structure in this company? Why do we exist within an economy that necessitates this sort of work in the first place? Um, so there you go. The gosh darn Batman says no read Kierkegaard. The point of philosophy is to learn to be anxious in the right way. I mean, that's one of them. But I like that comment because of that. So there we go. Let's look at the next one. Let's can I click over? It is a similar thing here. As someone who works in tech, philosophy is necessary. It's so ingrained in people's problems that not knowing about people and the philosophical dilemmas that we deal with are needed. The bigger ones I can think about, stuff like cybersecurity, where the user is left with a lot of anxiety. Here we go. Someone just met reference Kierkegaard in the chat, where the user is left with a lot of anxiety over the feelings of hopelessness and dread. Um, yeah, that's kind of real. That's kind of real for sure. So again, people saying that they've been able to use their education and philosophy to think about tech issues. There you go. I mean, the real reason to get into philosophy is just the money, guys. So much money. Okay, so this this comment, you might be thinking, what the hell is this? In the chat GPT video, the two things it wouldn't write about. The first thing I asked it to do was make a sponsored ad for um, a video sponsored by Lockheed Martin that Wattrack would make, because why not um, do that? Okay, so someone said, um, and thank you, uh, Pharaoh Crackfeet. Um, do I like the stream the same way I would like a normal video? Oh, yeah, yeah, feet, it's that. You just like click the thumbs up button. That's, that's, all, we, that's all we ask of you. That's all we ask of you. Um, let's see. Yeah, Xander all hates Alan DeBotton's videos. Before I worked for Wisecrack, Wisecrack did some sort of collaboration with the School of Life. So some of the early School of Life videos um, have a Wisecrack logo on them, which is weird. Uh, but we asked it to do a Lockheed Martin video, which it wouldn't. ChatGPT was like, we will not make you a sponsored video by Lockheed Martin. Um, Rando McDude said, I would buy that book. Hell yeah. Um, the other thing it wouldn't do was make a video about the philosophy of MILF Manor. We've talked about MILF Manor on the stream before. It's the lifetime television show in which eight women in their fifties and their sons are at a resort together, banging each other, I guess. I've, I've stopped watching. I'm going to catch up. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't do that. So I asked why that was the case. And someone commented and said, my uneducated guess on why MILF Manor is off limits is because a lot of these AI prompts get data fed to them from a lot of open and semi-open source online content, which includes saucy fan fiction. So MILF might trigger the wrong kind of content. Um, Mellow Jello does widescreen comedy videos on Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. Um, we do not, man, I haven't, I haven't heard that name in a long time. Mellow Jello, I used to be, there was a period when I was doing my master's degree, I was reading uh, de Chardin a bit. I kind of forget what their deal was like a French Catholic philosopher, right? Maybe. Um, Eddie Villanueva says, because of the social media panopticon, I have to mention that when I asked ChatGPT to grade a student's paper, I didn't actually use that as official grade. I'd already submitted it. Yeah. Um, Bingo Barra likes the School of Life takes. Yeah, I mean, and here's the thing too. The School of Life, some of their takes are fine. I get a little hyperbolic sometimes, but I do think there is a risk to do that um michael ringo says don't you think that making gulag as a joke is offensive have i talked about gulags on this stream today asking as a ukrainian who currently is living through ussr revisionistic invasion so um michael ringo first of all um we, we i like truly that's gnarly we're really sorry you have to live through that and that's really horrible um i don't want to like get into you know Russian and Eastern European history, and I don't want to say anything that's accidentally offensive. I think in joking about a gulag, <laughs> and I'm I'm laughing only because 
I'm taking this kind of seriously because I want to I want to honor your question seriously. In America, a lot of people will equate anything that's vaguely progressive. And I'm talking about things like maybe healthcare should be cheaper or maybe college should be cheaper. And in America, there's a tendency to equate anything vaguely progressive or woke with like classic Soviet communism. So not Russia today, but the Soviet era. And using a term like gulag in a contemporary American context. And, you know, when you explain the joke, you kill the joke, poking the dead frog, am I right? Or dissecting the frog. Um, but I think in making a joke like that, it's pointing out the ridiculousness of people on the right in America, creating any equivocation between Soviet era Russia and especially the Stalinist era and like progressive American politics. But again, truly would not want to offend uh, someone who's in your situation. I get that you're living through some very, very real shit. So I don't know. Was that an OK answer, Henry? Am, am I am I really am I shit in the bed right now? I think I think you're you're getting at at something true about like reactionaries way to like hyperbolize any any inconvenience as a form of political uh, uh, oppression. But yeah, yeah, I think you're making sense. Yeah, but um, but Michael, thank you for asking that. And you know, if it wasn't, I don't know. Let, let me know if if, if uh, you know any thoughts. And also, too, I think another issue as well with like referencing a gulag would almost be that people on the right in America will be like, "Oh, teachers want to put kids in gulags or whatever," but then they put kids in gulags on the uh, the the border with Mexico. So there you go. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, Michael, thank you. So, and yeah, Michael makes this point, which I think is important. Um, so someone named Justin Boyd in the chat keeps talking about someone sitting behind me. I think it's like a fun bit you guys are doing in the chat, but I'm home alone. It's just me and my wife who live here. Um, Michael said, hope Americans will get free healthcare. Speaking of someone who has free healthcare in my country, we see U.S. is a very wealthy country. Yeah, Michael, and that's one of the, the contradictions we live in, right? That America is a country that is wealthy, presents itself as wealthy, is perceived as wealthy, but we're also a country that has, you know, uh, a homelessness crisis, a healthcare crisis, a, a lot of things like that. And in many ways, um, we're, we're becoming increasingly, what's the word I want to use? It's just starting to suck a little bit. Okay, but um, but thanks for that question. Okay, so here's another, this is from the AI video. Someone said, it's crazy how automation will be a good thing under just about any other system than capitalism. LMAO, laugh my ass off. You know, it's a fun, someone said guacamole, not gulags in the chat. And I can't say that I don't agree. Um, but yeah, I, again, I love that. Cause so some people will talk about this sometimes like automation and the history of automation and like leftist thought and, you know, something like Marx talks about and stuff. And it's something you even get. Um, Justin Boyd is not the man behind uh, Michael um, uh, Vasileva. Sorry if I said your name wrong, but I think later today, myself, Justin Boyd, and maybe that person behind me might all be somewhere together. So if you want to murder three people in Los Angeles, try to find us later. Um, okay. Oh, Ben, first time making it live. Thank you for being here. And thank you for finding my voice sexy. Um, you know, for a fugly commie, I try to be as sexy as possible. Okay, so with the automation thing, right? Um, you know, it's, why am I forgetting the name of was it was Hayek the economist that said we were going to work like 15 hours a week by now? I feel like my brain is broken today. All this to say, friends, <laughs> at many points, um, you know, people from Marx to I think Hayek and others were like, yeah, technology, automation, we're going to have to work a lot less in the future. Obviously, this makes perfect sense. But of course, we don't work less, we work more. And I just like that this comment gets at that idea that under a lot of other systems, automated technology will be looked at as a way to consolidate human labor, to give us more time to be human and less time to be laborers. But instead, we're seeing the opposite. Um, Justin Boyd is now daring people to do a three-way murder today. So all I can say is uh, get after it. Why not? I would be impressed. Honestly, if someone shows up somewhere in Los Angeles, they find the three of us and they kill us. I'll be like just impressed. So there you go. Do Dota Dope said, Did you take your meds? Yeah, med I met it up today. Small but on my small dose, you know. Sometimes I do a bigger dose, sometimes a smaller dose. Um, I'm not talking about illegal narcotics, by the way. Next comment. So this is about friendship. So 
uh, the video that came out most recently, hopefully you guys saw it. It's on loneliness and friendship. And one of the things we were exploring is why does it feel sometimes like we don't have as many friends as we used to? And, and that, like friendship has gotten harder and the people are more isolated. And we got a lot of really good comments. So there you go. Someone said, where will you be? LA is a big city. So you got to, I'm not going to give you that much uh, of a clue. Paul says, hey, everyone. Sorry, I'm late. Who's that? It's just me, Michael and producer Henry. This comment says the hardest part for me is just the continuous reaching out that needs to be done to maintain a friendship when you don't see each other frequently. You really have to go out of your way to say to this person, I like you. Let's be friends. It takes a lot of vulnerability. And then you have to keep calling or messaging them to maintain the friendship and hope they still want to be your friends and you're not being annoying. And how often should you talk? There are a lot of variables. I really, Maynard Keynes, yes. Thank you, Letter W. Um, that's why Letter W is allowed to bully me because they also come through with, with the clutch help like that. Uh, but, you know, this is a comment that I really related to in that I feel like I've had points in my life where I have been anxious about not like having enough friends or not having like a social life. But then I realize I also don't like reach out to people. I, I, I've had periods where I wait for people to reach out to me. And then you got to wonder like, oh, maybe, maybe I'm the problem. I don't know if anyone else has ever had that. But I think that's a very real anxiety. And I think the vulnerability thing is true. I think a lot of us don't want to be rejected or feel shitty. So we then don't put ourselves out there and then we feel shitty. Um, I don't know, Henry, how do you feel about stuff like this? Are you, are you someone who's good at, it reaching out, maintaining friendships, or you? No, no, it is uh, something I feel. Like some it is something I feel I have to remind myself to do as well. Uh, I think we're geared towards individualism in such a cultural way that uh, we can like expect passively for things to happen for us in ways that will just be self frustrating if we don't mitigate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Vox says it's weird that you made a whole video about not having friends, but you insist on only ever being in your apartment alone with no one else there ever, ever. Yeah, that's that's my truth. Um, G Hint says, relatable. Living that older millennial, all friends are married with kids and I'm too introverted to meet new people. Yeah. Uh, Mel Gel getting called out. Or, yeah, let's see. Hard to find friends, I'm not friends with misogynist. Um, yeah, don't be friends with misogynist. There were some comments on that video that were like, well, it's really hard to make friends when you're a part of the woke mob. Because you won't be because everyone's racist and transphobic, so you won't be friends with them. I was like, I don't think that's it. I don't think that's a good. I don't think that's it. Um, let's see. Someone said, "What does the hoodie man think?" I'm I'm the hoodie man. Um, Jeffrey says, "Hey, Michael, I'll be your friend, but there's a catch. I live in Brooklyn. Too far." Next comment. I feel like the sudden interest and explosion in tabletop RPGs is partially. We have a lot of comments on D and D and RPGs, like tabletop RPGs. Um, it's partially due to this increased feeling of isolation. People want to get together and play games for a few hours a week so that they feel connection, the connection of friendship. It always begins as a friendship of utility as groups band together for a common goal, but at least with that, there's hope to develop deeper non-working friendships over time. That shared commitments to regularly participate gives many people a time and place they can be expected to meet. Yeah, I think that's great. I think any activity that gets people together rips. So whether it's uh, RPGs, D&D, &D, bowling, community theater, playing music with people. I think stuff like that's clutch because there's not a lot of things just to like get us out there. Um, Hey, Dilly, thanks for hopping in. Really appreciate it. And as always, if you're just showing up, feel free to like the stream if you haven't already. It would mean a lot. Um, and this might be the last stream because I have challenged um, someone to do a triple homicide for me and two friends tonight. So this might be the last <laughs> stream I ever do. Uh, if, if, that, if they're successful... Henry will do like a slideshow in remembrance thing next time. But yeah, um, Vox says, turns out the woke mob is really easy to be friends with. I have lots of friends in the woke mob. Hell, the woke mob can even get you laid. Vox is making a lot of, uh, a lot of promises here, guys. Um, Devil's Advocate says, any shy people near Dallas, Texas looking to make friends? Hit me up because I'm shy as fuck too. Yeah, I saw some people in the comments to that video talking about trying to like meet up, make friends. I like that. Let's have tiny wisecrack meetups everywhere. Um, Another comment. We're almost done with comment corner. And also, if you make music, please make a comment corner theme song and then wait a few days and send it to wisecracklive at gmail.com. As someone who's moved around a lot, best way to make new friends is to get a job in a bar, even one shift a week. It's a great work hard, play hard at the same time lifestyle. Also, volunteering. Not only do you have to meet nice people or volunteers, but the sense of community engagement helps assuage feelings of isolation. Yeah. So... 
and again, I'll say this, if you're someone that struggles with alcohol, you shouldn't work in a bar, but definitely working in bars and restaurants are like, I've had multiple friends who've moved to cities where they know nobody and you start working in a restaurant or a bar and it's very easy to get plugged into a community and you meet lots of people and you make money. So that's fun. But also the volunteering thing. What I like about volunteering is if you do volunteering stuff, political organizing, community organizing, you're going to meet people who are probably not bad people because they're, they're giving their time to do stuff like that. I kind of think the same thing about like community art or community theater classes. You're going to meet solid people. And I, I said this last week, when I moved to England for my last academic job, I knew not a soul in the town where I lived. My first night there, I wandered alone in the rainy streets, found a bar that had jazz music and was like, I'll sit alone and listen to jazz. But it's weird because in England and any, any Europeans, I'm actually... I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this, but America has a pretty solid go to bars or go to like music clubs alone vibe. It's it's not too awkward to do it alone in England and a lot of places in Europe. There's not like seats at the bar. So if you're alone, you have to like take like a seat at a table or it's kind of weird. But either way, my first night in that town, went to a bar alone, listened to jazz, had a couple beers, felt very isolated, saw a sign up that said, you know, improv classes at this place. Thought to myself, I've always wanted to do that went home, went to the website, saw that a class was starting in three days, signed up. I spent two great years in England and that's literally how I made all my friends there. Um, not to say that all of my friends were, were improv and theater people, but you know, then you meet people through those people. So there you go. Um, yeah, uh, Kevin Vanderplex says in the Netherlands, it's super awkward to go alone. I feel like in the Netherlands, everyone has friends. You just seem like a, just everyone in the Netherlands is tall and has friends. Coffee can be a good alternative for non-alcoholic third places. Yeah, the thing with coffee that's rough, though, is more and more coffee shops have become places you go with, like, your headphones to do that. But um, but I like coffee shops. That's, you know, I'll, I'll tell the whole story sometime. But uh, I met my wife in a coffee shop just by sitting in a coffee shop next to her and chatting. Going to a rave is cool going alone. Very European of you, Kevin. Going to your raves on your drugs that the government probably pays for, for you. Um, Turtles all the way down went to two concerts last week in Europe. Very enjoyable. Coffee makes you woke, says Arsene. I think this is probably the last comment, so we're almost done with the content corner. Maybe one more after this. The other thing that's an issue is the number of parasocial relationships we have. Content creators we watch. Fuck content creators. We have frustrating and boring normal friends. We can have the ideal friend who constantly gives us inspiration, information, and value and asks nothing in return. I ask you many things in return. I ask you for your likes. I need them. I feed on them. So there you go. Whoa, Devil's Advocate gifted a membership. Jump on it. Lord of the Chat today is currently Devil's Advocate. The Lord of the Chat is the person who gifts memberships. It's very cool. Um, Netherlands, very tall. I'm like, I'm, I'm, you know, let's see. Yeah, Tado says, going to a bar alone in Ireland would be mental until you're over 40. But then it's a standard. Yes. I mean, that's when I've been to bars in Ireland before. Young people are always together. And old men are always just like hanging out. So there you go. Um, Scott Smith said, question, what do you think the relationship is between less friends, social organizations, and mobilizing organized political movements? I think it's hard to do something. Um, I think it's hard to get organized and do things if you're kind of like isolated um, from your community. So yeah, I don't know. Um, Penny Waldrop can chat in live stream and trick you. God damn it. I, I fell for it again. I fell for it again. Oh, I think this is, yeah. Is this the last comment? Maybe most people my age, late twenties have really bad. Okay. This person said most people my age, late twenties have really bad boundaries and communication, conflict resolution skills. The primary method that I've personally seen most people deal with people they don't want to is ghosting them with zero thought about that person to a degree. I've sometimes thought felt a little sociopathic, but collectively as a culture, you know what this reminds me of? I should have pulled this video up to watch today. Some of you probably saw this. Have you seen the video? where someone, I think it was on TikTok, and they say that if you like ask a friend to pick you up from the airport, you're a sociopath with no boundaries. Like that's psychotic. What? Um, yeah, I'll maybe find, I'm sure some of you saw it who are hanging out in the chat, but it's just like, Jesus Christ. Um, oh yeah, last comment, someone said, I do community theater. I met so many people this way. Honestly, I have no idea how to make friends without it. Agreed, again, if you're having you know uh, a struggle to do stuff like that, um, you know, do theater and stuff like that. Okay, cool. So there was 
there is there is comment corner i would love a comment corner theme song thank you for liking the stream thank you for being here it's 11 36 this is wisecrack live i'm michael burns home completely alone um with producer henry on the line hey you doing what we do if you are just tuning in um we're gonna start watching some videos we're talking about work today i, I would say work is vaguely a theme connected to some landlord stuff um so we got some videos on the line we might get into the harris hole a little bit later today we tend to not do harris holes two weeks in a row but johnny talks about unemployment which i think relates to this week's thematic so i think it makes sense to maybe do that uh as always you can be a member of the channel you can join our patreon all those things are options why do i mention it so much because it it helps us and uh no, I mean, I'll, okay, I'll tell you a story real quick. Some of you might have seen this. TikTok is is supposedly doing a new thing where if you're under 18, you can only look at it for 60 minutes a day. It's a government regulation. And and people, I'm going to cover my mouth so I have deniability. People at the parent company, which I work for, are freaking out because they've tried to pivot so much of the content model to TikTok. And I've repeatedly said we shouldn't do that because TikTok's eventually going to shut down and something like YouTube is a lot more consistent. So all that to say is um, trying to grow our memberships and our patreon kind of just makes us a little a little more safe from that i want to make sure that we stay alive so that's why i push for stuff like that someone said scott didn't like johnny's uh unemployment video i haven't seen it yet because i i never watch i've never watched the johnny harris video not on stream that's true okay so let's start with this this is a fun one i'll i'll pull it up and i'll hit pause okay. immediately but this uh hit tiktok this week and i got the youtube short version of it Guys, so this guy made a video on tipping landlords. Made a video on tipping landlords. Um, yeah, we have a parent company. It's called Enthusiast Gaming. Okay, let's watch this one. Look at this guy. Already, he has like the Blue Lives Matter flag on his shirt. Um, so let's see. Oh, yeah, let me rewind. Okay, so here we go, guys. You've probably seen this, but yeah. All right, thanks for paying your rent this month. Go ahead and sign here. It's just going to ask you a couple of questions. A tip? I'm not tipping my landlord. First of all, has anyone ever paid rent like that on an iPad where you go like scan your card? That seems crazy. Um, and I kind of like as well that the green haired guy, maybe it's just being silly, but also the idea that someone with dyed hair would be a member of the woke mob who doesn't want to tip their landlord. So you'll tip a barista who pours overpriced coffee into a cup, but not the guy who's on call 24 seven to make sure you have a safe home. Yeah, landlords are on call 24-7 to make sure we have safe homes. That's their job. Like they, my, I, my landlord loses sleep worrying about my safety. Jesus Christ. See, there's no one behind me. I've been telling you guys this the whole time. And then I just, you guys are, you guys are idiots sometimes. I'm not tipping you. This isn't a restaurant. Okay, so you'll tip an extra 25% for somebody to carry you a basket of chicken wings, but you won't tip someone who responds for after hours emergency calls. I, uh. Oh, wow. He's owning him with that logic right there. Like the, the equation between the two things. I'll ask you in the chat. What, what do we think the difference is between um, a landlord and a barista or, or a server at a restaurant? I'm curious what you all think. I have thoughts, but I want to know what the, this group of free thinkers in the chat thinks. Uh, yep. Well, I guess when it's time for your lease renewal, I'm going to make sure gratuity is included. So he literally then is like, when it's time for a lease renewal, I'm going to raise your rent because you didn't tip me. It's a little tip I learned from two guys. This guy is a psychopath. This guy is legitimately a psychopath. Just a psychopath. Um, the idea, we already have to pay so much of our rent. Housing, which is a necessity. It's a, it's a human necessity for our life. We have to live in a place. Um, and it wants to tip that. I just can't even imagine leaving a tip for a landlord. No one can really do this. Um, letter W says Caspi isn't here. I don't know what to think. Same. Caspi is normally the one that brings, brings, uh, hopefully they watch this later and they can see that we're talking about them. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's well, yeah, maintenance. So like, for example, my landlord doesn't, they do not physically do maintenance. There's a maintenance guy who I'm pretty sure is wildly underpaid. And I've definitely tipped him before because he's not the person who owns a bunch of property. He's a dude that like, I think probably makes money off the books and does not come off as someone who's swimming in money. So 
if he comes and fixes something, but yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Kevin said, what's the average rent in the U S for like 25? I don't know what that would be, Kevin. So, but like, I'll say where I live in Los Angeles, a one bedroom apartment, the cheapest I can imagine a decent one bedroom apartment being would probably be $1,500, but it's likely closer to $2,000. Um, I don't know how much, how much is rent in Austin these days, Henry? Oh, Sorry it's... to dox you. <laughs> Uh, I mean, bad. Uh, I can think maybe of, like apartments as low as like twelve hundred for a single bedroom. Uh, just yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I mean it's a lot. Um, Logan Reese says I have a tip for landlords: get a real job. Um, and Thornback says rent in the U.S. varies wildly from town to town. Yes, it does. Um, yeah, and also the the twenty four seven thing. It's pretty wild, as well. Are they confusing landlord with property manager? Yeah, that's a whole other thing. Um, Abar says the only landlords I ever spent are those that rent out basements of the houses they already live in. Yeah, I lived in a cool basement once that was uh, in a in in Baltimore. Rented it from this nice woman. The only thing I didn't like about it is uh, when I rented this basement, um, this lady had a cat, and in her cat one day I was sleeping, and I woke up because the cat was like. And I looked down and I was like, hey, Smitty, that was the cat's name. And then Smitty like kind of pawed me and like looked as if he wanted me to look at something. And then what Smitty wanted me to look at was a decapitated bird that he had brought me, I guess, as a gift of sorts. But it was really crazy and kind of mafia-esque. So that's why I don't really mess with cats like that. So there you go. Um but yeah, there's not like a lot else to say about this landlord thing. It's just pretty crazy and felt like we had to talk about it. Um, Henry, what should we do? Should we should we check out the bare minimum Mondays article? Should we talk? Should we, maybe we should do that now? Yeah, let's or, let's start there. Yeah. So, um, Insider has an article this week, and uh, so this this reminds me of the um the trend of like quiet quitting, which as we all talked about wasn't really a real thing because quiet quitting was people just being like, oh, I do the exact amount of my job I need to do to get paid and not get fired. That's quiet quitting. And I'm like, that's just working in my humble opinion. But there you go. Damn, you guys like Smitty a lot. You guys are really, you're telling on yourselves as being kind of psychotic. Um, yeah, okay. We're getting some good rent prices there. Uh, any landlords in the chat though, let us know what you think. We will... I'll t I'll, I think we're pretty good in this chat about hearing opposing viewpoints. It's an important value for us. Oh, the other video we recorded yesterday is on public intellectuals. I forgot about that. Um, oh, no, we didn't record that yesterday. That's coming out soon. Never mind. Um, but thanks again for being here. Like the stream if you haven't already. If we get to 666, we, we have some fun. But so this is an article. It's by Sarah Jackson. The title is, I do bare minimum Mondays at work to help beat the Sunday scaries and avoid burnout. And it's completely changed my life and how I approach my job. Now, when I see a title like this, I'm like, okay, that's interesting. I think Mondays kind of suck. I do hate the term the Sunday scaries, but I will say that sometimes there is a feeling of dread. Mellow Jello said landlord lives matter. Mellow Jello, guys, never stops talking about how they would die for landlords. And I'm just like, stop it. Stop it. That's why we had to stop making... Uh, Mellow Jello, the word of the chat. Kevin says it's vital if we want to improve our society to listen and argue with opposing views. For sure. Kevin, I love opposing views as long as they're not trolly. You are you're, you are always welcome in this chat to express opposing views as long as you're not a troll about it. And you can't call me a fugly commie. <laughs> that's, that's where I draw the line. Okay. So Marissa Jo Mays has gone viral for TikToks of her bare minimum Mondays, which helped redefine her relationship to work. So let's go to the start of the article. Oh, so I think this is the Marissa Joe is telling this to us. So Marissa Joe, bare minimum Mondays, says in 2020, I worked in medical device sales. I was completely miserable and burned out. I thought the problem was my boss or the work culture in corporate America. So I quit my job and gave self-employment a whirl. I like stories like this, but I will say whenever someone, whenever someone's like, I quit my job you know that they quit their job because they had enough money to quit their job. And I think it's important to recognize and not that there's, I'm not criticizing our friend Marissa Joe here, but you, ha you have to be in a position of, of some level of privilege to quit your job, whether it's a partner who helps with rent or, or having savings or something like that, I think. Right. 
Um, yeah, just catching up with chat because I, I think I, I think people might be slandering my age again, and I might, I might get off. I might get off the stream if you, if you guys keep this up. <laughs> um, oh, I think I did. Someone say something crazy. I didn't see it. Okay. Um, I just saw. Okay, the, so going back to geo libertarian. Uh, what is geo libertarianism? I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Really what is geo libertarian? Is that like I know what libertarian is. I know geo is the prefix to talk about Earth, right? Or something. Yeah, like geology um, or geography. Pick your uh, pick your. Yeah, discipline. Kevin, don't put a gun to your head. No talk about gun to your head. Um, Vox says I quit my job and gave self employment. I go implies. And also my parents are rich. I think it's important that people should just say, and in, I, people should feel, we should create a society. Okay, you guys are going to hate this take, I think. I think we should create a society where people can be open and honest about like having rich parents or getting money from their parents or like inheriting money or something like that. And I'm going to tell you why. I think because if people could be honest about that without being judged, then people could be like, oh, I have this new house that my parents helped me buy. And then I could say, oh, cool. This person bought a house because their parents helped them buy it. And I don't need to compare myself to that person because my parents can't help me buy a house. You know what I mean? Like, I think that the, the, the fact that people feel ashamed to just acknowledge like, yeah, I got money from my family leads to them having to hide that and the rest of us having to unfairly compare ourselves. So that's, that's today's first hot take. Last week's hot take was about how... Uh, Maybe we shouldn't use political labels to define ourselves. So this week's hot take is let people with family money uh, just be honest about it without shame. So there you go. And if you do have family money, let me just say this. Um, have you heard of Patreon? Because if you have family money, join Wisecrack's Patreon. And if you give us enough, I'll make any video for you. I swear to God. Um, I'll set my price at a thousand dollars i'll make any video you want and you might think that sounds like a lot but it costs us more than a thousand dollars to make a video to be honest so you know there you go um vox has agreed we act like inheriting is bad i wish i'd inherited generational wealth it should not be a stigma i mean think about it this way like and lick the stream everyone thanks dan i don't know if you were i'm sure some people here have kids i don't i don't have a kid um i don't think henry has kids but maybe you do henry do you have kids if you don't want to talk about I you do don't not. Have to. Yeah, um, just a couple guys without kids. But, you know, I wouldn't. Um, oh, Kevin, I was kidding. I wasn't really going to stop the stream. Sorry. Um, my sarcasm is, is a little flat, effectively, sometimes. But, yeah, I don't know. I would want to give money to my kid, likely because the world sucks, too. So if I had money, I'd want to be like, hey, have some of this money because the world sucks and, and you need it. So there you go. Um, someone's moving to Europe to inherit their dad's business. I hope it's a cool business. Um, and not like an assassin's business. Okay, let's get back to this article. So, so Marissa leaves her job. Wait, was that was that your name, Marissa? Yeah, Marissa Joe Mays. It's a fun name. Marissa soon realized the issue was bigger than that. I had a hustle culture problem. Don't we all, guys? A perfectionism problem. I was still approaching work the same way as in my corporate job. It was like a cycle of stress and burnout. I feel bad because I was so burned out, I couldn't do anything. So I'd make an insanely long to-do list for Mondays with the hope of overachieving my way back to feeling good about myself and how much I was getting done. Bad, right? Because Marissa's internalized an ideology um, that says that getting a lot done makes her a better person, which isn't true. This is important in the chat. Adam said, Henry, you like whiskey? <laughs> what do you think, Henry? I'm just curious. Uh, yeah? What, what, what's happening here? Is someone getting me a drink? I don't know. And then G Hints is trying to take your job. Some said cost more than a thousand per video. I'd be glad to offer my editing services if that's the case. Stop trying to take Henry's job, G Hints. Jesus. Are you guys trying to get him drunk, then steal his job? I think that's what's happening. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. So, okay. So back to the article. Yeah, so every week, the Sunday scaries would hit. Listen, I hate the phrase, but I can't deny that there's something real about that. And every Monday, I'd sleep until the absolute last second because I know that list was waiting for me. I relate to Marissa here. A bad habit I have that, I, that I've had my entire life, I don't wake up in the morning an hour or two hours before I have to start working. I wake up in the morning with just enough time to make a cup of coffee and sit in front of the computer. So I just get like right after it. And 
It's not a good habit, but I love to sleep. So the pressure she was putting on herself was paralyzing. And I realized something had to change. One day last March, she didn't really say yet what she does for work. And it says early in the article, she's like a TikTok influencer. So I'm a little bit like, oh, okay. Um, John says, how is each video costing you all a thousand? Is it salaries? Well, yeah, John. So like for every video we make, I mean, for example, sometimes, so let's say a video, this is a little bit of digression, but I like transparency. Um, you know, if we, let's say we have a video and someone writes the script for it. Sometimes we have researchers and we have some freelance writers. Someone writes a script, we might pay them 450 or like $500 to write that script, which we wish we could pay more. Um, and that's even probably more than we normally pay. But so, you know, we start with that. Well, then we're normally freelancing someone edit that video as well. We're also paying the salaries of our amazing producer, Olivia, our head of editorial, Amanda, um, our director, Lux, myself. So we have all the salaries. We have the studio where we film stuff at. I mean, there's just like a lot of things that go into it. And when you add all those costs up, it's actually like a lot. Um, so you Mel Jell is in the gang, wakes up at 8.45 and meetings start at 9.00. Um, let's see. <laughs> Letter W says Burns whole personality screams a love for sleep. It's not, I mean, that's that's not wrong. That's not wrong. Okay. So here Marissa goes. In March, she's gonna change her life. One day last March, I gave myself permission to the absolute bare minimum for work. And it was like some magic spell came over me. Marissa, don't do witchcraft. But if we get to six, 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 we'll do witchcraft. I felt better. I wasn't overwhelmed. I actually got more done than expected. Okay, so here's a couple of things about this. And the first part is just kind of like, I let myself do the bare minimum at work. Why should we overdo it at work, guys? Especially if your job sucks. Sometimes we have jobs that suck. I've had jobs that suck. My current job does not suck because right now part of my job is hanging out with you all. I'm lucky in that position. I've had jobs that are fucking terrible. If your job sucks, do the absolute bare minimum. Do the absolute least you have to do to not get fired, guys. I'm sorry. That's just normal. So when she says that she felt better, I wasn't overwhelmed. It's like, yeah, of course. But then, and I actually got more done than I expected. This is what I hate. I hate when these type of articles are sort of like, part one is like, I set healthy boundaries and made sure my life wasn't wholly oriented around producing wealth for another person. Um, but then in doing so, I got more done. Also going back, Nelson left a comment. Nelson said, my inheritance will be spent on the revolution and flexing on live streams. But also, I'll only coerce a video out of you if I really want to. Thank you, Nelson. That's a good use of inheritance. Um, let's see. Um, I showed up late, but what does the person who wrote this article do? We think they <laughs> do TikTok, um, which makes me think, I don't know if anyone's seen the show. I think you should leave. Season two, there's the Patty Harrison sketch where their driver's ed and the woman's job is tables. <laughs> and they just want to know what her job is. And they say tables. And I feel like TikTok is like tables. The Lion Roar says, Michael, we're all really disappointed you didn't give Full Sail University the full college try. Man, Full Sail got, they, they got mad at, they got mad at us. I'll, okay, you know what? I'm going to finally speak on this. Um, people got mad when we did, we had Full Sail sponsor some videos. And like, that's fine. I get that people don't like that place. I want you to know, I've never said this before. I tried to die on the hill of in every edit we made of the ads. I kept saying full sale, a for-profit university, which did it. And I kept saying for profit and trying to sneak it in there. And they kept coming back to us being like, can you not say that? And eventually, you know, we had to take it out. But I just want you to know, guys, sometimes that I... But yeah, Patty Harrison is Patty Harrison's the best. There's days where I will say Patty Harrison is my favorite comedian on the planet. I think Patty Harrison, she she's she's a lead for me. She's if I had to do a comedian's top five, let me think. Yeah, top five, like young, youngish comedians. Patty Harrison is absolutely in it. Um, the gosh darn Batman said, wait, what happened with full sale? They sponsored some videos a while ago and they flew, flew me out to Florida to hang out at Full sale where everyone is very nice. I'm not gonna bullshit you guys. Everyone was so nice there. Um, but people don't like it because it's a for-profit school, which is true. I'll also say this too. We did those videos that were sponsored by Full Sale. And for anyone who's paying attention, right after that, we put out a long video on college that totally shat on for-profit universities. So you know what I mean? Um, Nora Kmine said, I'm a full sale grad. It was okay. 
but it's really predatory and they exploit a lot. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a cool place that, I don't know, people were so, so nice there, but, you know, for-profit education is rough. Someone said, can we have a Patty Party stream one day? I would love to do a stream where we just watch Patty Harrison videos for sure. One of my favorite Patty Harrison videos is, um, it's really old now. It's on Comedy Central's channel. I think we could watch it without getting demonetized where she's at karaoke and the bartender encourages her to sing and then she's shy and then she just sings a song about how she loves the police and Trump and everyone starts booing her. It's really good. Christopher Dent, thank you so much. Love the show, guys. Wisecrack helps me keep my brain busy on interesting things during my depressing long work days. Christopher, thank you so much. And sorry to talk about work today during this, but we're talking about work today. Um, Aunt Fam went to a for-profit school as well. It's tough. It's tough. Nice in Florida in the same sentence. What the fuck, Mr. Burns? Um, let's see. Yeah, Patty Harrison is trans and she's awesome. Also, Patty Harrison, guys, if you don't know why Patty Harrison got kicked off of Twitter, just look it up. It's no one has ever gotten banned from Twitter in a cooler way than Patty Harrison. But guys, this is not Patty Harrison live. Uh, this is Wisecrack live. So there you go. We also love Patty Hearst. Okay, so let's get back to this. So she now said, I've done bare minimum Monday every week since. Now that I'm reading this, I could see a Patty Harrison sketch where she's doing a bit on, on bare minimum Mondays. Managing expectations is really important. I learned to cut out wishful thinking tasks and aim for two or three important things that'll move the needle. And I'm thrilled when I finish those. Again, this just sounds kind of like normal. So there you go. This just sounds like normal life. On bare minimum Monday, I don't take meetings and take it slow for the first two hours. Guys, on Monday, we have our first meetings pretty late at Wisecrack, and we're pretty slow the first couple hours. I'll do some reading, some journaling, maybe some stuff around the house. It's two hours of no technology, no checking email. That's nice. I genuinely think that's cool. Around 10 or so, but here's why I'm different from her. I would just sleep those two hours. Um, Wayne, what's up? Hey, oh, glad to see you here. Um, Let's see, around, yeah, so around 10 or so, I let myself do whatever I want creatively. It could be shooting content or making visuals for my brand. Okay, here we go. It's work-related, but I make sure it's creative work that I enjoy. I'll do an hour of that before breaking for lunch or a walk. Midday walks, rip, guys. If you have it in you during your work week to take a walk, I think it really helps. Thank you for being here. It's Wisecrack Live. Uh, like the stream. Gosh darn Batman. It is basically the I think you should leave Shark Tank skit. Now I just want to watch I think you should leave. Also, I'm going to jump. I'm going to bounce around and someone will leave a comment, you know, on the VOD thing. And they'll say something like, I, I like Michael and Wisecrack, but watching these videos is hard. It's like watching ADAD, ADHD crawl up someone's butt and take over their brain. He bounces around too much. It's just like, what are you going to do? It works for some people. It doesn't work for others. If it works for you, thank you. And I love you. Um, someone referenced the show as one of our patrons. Um, is it called Kunk Does History or Kunk Does? Do you know the, do you know the show, Henry? Yeah, the Netflix the show. The Kunk show. Yeah, what's it called again? Kunk something? Kunk Explains Things? Um, fuck. Either way, one of you recommended it, and I watched Kunk on Earth. Guys, it's the best show I've seen in such a long time. I was absolutely dying when I, and this woman interviews some like philosophers in it. If you have not watched that show, Jesus Christ, it's good. Okay. So let's get back to this. So she'll break for lunch and a walk. Then I do my main work task for two hours. I'm not multitasking. I'm not distracted. I'm not on my phone. If I'm not done after that, I'll do another hour, but it's usually more than that. No more than that. My Monday workday is shorter because it's really focused. I get the same amount done as my old eight hour work days. It just sounds like this should be every day. What does she do her other days? Because this sounds great. Yeah. Um, um, what is the work that you're doing for those two? I have questions, but I'll wait till we get to the end. Tables. Her job is tables, Henry. Um, uh, someone said, I wonder how, how Jared is doing. Jared has a channel. You should check it out. Uh, Jared, former Wisecrack host, has a YouTube channel. Is making videos. You should definitely check it out. Nelson gets it. ADHD is located in the butt. Um, most comments I've received about bare minimum Monday are either you're living my dream or what an entitled millennial who doesn't know the value of hard work. At one point in my corporate career, I probably would have rolled my eyes too. After experiencing burnout, I get it. 
Ooh, now, now I feel bad because I, like I was kind of teasing her. And now this is four day work week. We're talking about that next. I promise, Michael Dodge. Um, Michael Dodge coin. I'm neurodivergent, and I think for neuro, but I feel like that's kind of vague to say I'm neurodivergent because there's a chance that someone says that and it means something real, but I feel like millennials throw that term around like it is nothing these days. I'm neurodivergent, and I think for neurodivergent people, we often do extra mental lifting that neurotypical people don't do in order to mask or fit in. Because we're overcompensating, we can be more prone to burnout. That's real. Letting myself off the hook for a lot of unspoken expectations and rules that didn't really matter was liberating. This is true, right? Like it, the psychological internalization of the boss inside your head. Not good. We've we've talked about this on stream before, guys. But this, um, he's like a Korean German philosopher, Byung Chul Han, has this book, The Burnout Society. I have some videos on it that I made during COVID on like my my own YouTube channel um shh, don't tell but i think that book is really good on that um she understands so, so i think we're towards the end of the article i understand oh fuck it, come on i understand bare minimum monday isn't realistic for everybody it should be i'm self-employed i work from home i'm not a mom but for anyone interested in trying it pay attention to where you're putting unnecessary pressure on yourself or setting unrealistic expectations if you know you won't have time for something don't put it on your list. Also, it's not a productivity hack. It kind of sounded like it was, Marissa, with one of the comments you made. But also, it's not a productivity hack. I get more done when easing the pressure. But I never meant for it to be a way to do more work. It's really a way to start the week prioritizing yourself as a person over yourself as an employee. That's important. You are a person more so than you are an employee. It's radically changed my life, not because of the productivity, but because of that self-compassion. Yeah. Listen, I, some of the message here, I'm not going to disagree with, right? We like some of this. Yeah, that's why I was saying I was going to wait till the end because I was worried the the conclusion was going to be I learned how to like deprogram myself of the nine to five and now my whole life is dedicated to capitalism. But like, no, it's like, yeah, I, I understand. I understand. Like I was in a workplace mentality that I needed to like get myself out of for the sake of myself. Uh, I like yeah. that. I'm going to start doing a bare midriff Mondays. Um, and get, get in trouble for showing up at meetings like that. Uh, let's see. Okay. So yeah, so there's some stuff there, but I do think, you know, this is sort of a, it's one of those things that's a part of that genre that sort of, and I get that we got to do what we got to do in the system that we're in, but kind of that logic of like, the world sucks. How can I accommodate? How can I change or accommodate myself? to deal with the, wor the world in a way that sometimes avoids thinking critically about why the world is that way. And I know that that doesn't fix things. It's not like saying like, oh, capitalism like makes capitalism go away. But, you know, I think there's still something, something there. But, um, but it's still not a bad way to live. And I, and I would say in general, the thing I like from that is the idea that in general, there's something to figuring out what the bare minimum you have to do is don't go above and beyond, but do tip your landlords. Um, so I want to talk about the four day work week stuff. And this is interesting because so um, there's this autonomy UK research center that's run by the student named um, Will Strong. Now, Will and Kyle Lewis uh, were on Culture Binge last year, the, the dead Wisecrack podcast I used to host. And that video where I interviewed them is still up on the Wisecast page. But um, there are people I know because we used to be a part of the same philosophy department in England. And rather than staying in academia, they went and started this sort of think tank. And normally think tanks are, are bad. But this one is dedicated to figuring out how we can work less, basically. And they're, one of their big models is like the four-day work week stuff. And they did a, a huge study on it. It just came out, yada, yada. And guys, who would, who would have thought? It's better for everyone, the four-day work week. Um, striving to balance is, yeah, you got to tip your YouTube philosopher because I don't own property. So there you go. So let's, I have a couple of videos up on this, now, and I'll be transparent, guys. I didn't watch these first. But I think, wait, is BBC one of the things that when we show their clips, we get fucked? I feel like we don't. I but... don't think so. From what I remember, it's like HBO, Warner Media. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. So... Um, 
So let's let's just watch this and see if some good stuff comes up. Um, BBC can be a little weird sometimes, but either way, four four day work week stuff rips. The biggest trial of a four day working week has ended in success with the performance success. of companies largely unharmed and workers feeling healthier and happier. Sixty one uh, businesses across Britain took part in the 61. study. Simpson reports. This is what a Friday looks like at environmental consultancy firm Tyler Grange. Guys, this is the most beautiful office I've ever seen. All the staff are off. They get 100% of their pay, but do 80% of the hours. Could you imagine having a three-day weekend every week, guys? Like, seriously. Seriously. Oh, my God. Someone said... Oh, what okay. started as a trial is now a permanent switch. We've seen our happiness go up significantly. And we've seen our fatigue come down. Let's go, Simon. So we can prove that our team are happier, less tired, and are making more money. It's pretty cool. So how did you do it? Uh, zero. That's a boss. That's a that's a, the boss of the company. Bosses sometimes don't say cool things like that. So I think it's cool that he is saying that. Um, let's see. Admin, I like to call it. We're trying to get rid of as much of the admin as possible that you didn't need to do. Our board meetings, where well, used to be two hours long, are now half an hour. If you give people uh, this incredible incentive of a whole day of your time a week, they're going to work really hard to become more productive. Just ask Linda, the office manager. A day off for me is to get to do the things that I want to do, like this. <laughs> it's a little different. Okay, listen, I want to be. <laughs> I want to say this. I did not see the thing coming that on Linda's day off, she is going to be on a desolate, dreary street in Birmingham, England, picking up trash. That is nice of her to do. That makes her a better person than me. If I were to have a four-day work week, you know you probably wouldn't catch me doing? I, I would. You probably wouldn't catch me doing this on my time off. It's also funny that she's wearing like very clean Nikes. I would probably also not wear nice sneakers doing this. Again, we're not hating on Linda. Someone in the chat said, is she on parole? <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's only America where anyone who picks up trash in a vest is definitely on parole. The litter picking something back for my community near where I live. What a good person. It gives me more time to reflect and be with nature. <laughs> I do like that she's like to be with nature and they're just walking in a graveyard full of dead bodies. I don't know why I find this so funny, you all. I don't know why I find this so funny. <laughs> She's just like, I love, love to be in nature with decomposing bodies. Are you happier? I am much happier. Healthier? Healthier, definitely much healthier. Why do they pick a you graveyard? A little bit of exercise as well. Could you ever... And then the, 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 I feel like that's the perspective of the, the dead souls emerging from their eternal rest, trying to get back into the mortal world. And they just look at the feet because that's as far as they can go. Go back to a five day week now. I wouldn't want to, no. <laughs> oh, you, you wouldn't? I wouldn't want to, no. It's, it's, it's something that I think more, more companies should take on. The results are in for the 61 firms who took part in this six-month trial. 61 firms. 39% of employees surveyed said they were... That's actually surprising. It's only 39%. I mean, that's really good. But you think more? Well, C. Corgi says, what is happening? Um, in, in case you're just tuning in, it's Wisecrack Live. I didn't I didn't do the, the one-hour check-in I normally do. It's Wisecrack Live. It's Michael Burns with Producer Henry. I'm home completely alone today. Um, and... We're currently talking about the four-day work week study. Uh, some some friends of the show, autonomy. When it says source, autonomy, University of Cambridge, Boston College, autonomy. Um, they them boys that we know and we like. Uh, they did the study about the four-day work week, sixty-one companies in England, and that led to people being able to pick up trash and hang out in graveyards on their day off. Less stress was a sixty-five percent reduction in sick days. And companies who provided data said revenues stayed broadly the same. And I know that issue of like revenue stayed the same. We might want to roll our eyes and be like, whatever. Also like the stream if you haven't already. I haven't said it in a while. If you're here, please like the stream. It helps us a lot. Um, Jackish Colbino said, I mean, dead bodies are nature, Michael. Hello. Welcome to uh, Dead Bodies Live. Um, but I think like when you hear those revenue stats, we can roll our eyes. But that's what we need, right? We need companies to see stats like less sick days, better revenue, all that sort of stuff, because they're only going to let us do this if they don't lose money. Um, but it seems by all accounts, and we'll keep watching this, we'll watch another video, 
that it is very feasible for something like this. And, and sometimes, I mean, you know, guys, I don't want to be a black pilled nihilist. Um, but I do feel sometimes like the word, Oh, the letter W said liking the stream prevents erectile dysfunction. That's totally true. If you don't like the stream, your penis isn't going to work good. But, um, I do feel sometimes like the idea of the world getting significantly better in our lifetime is not good. So it's probably not going to happen. I hate to say it. Okay. But if something like this could happen, if the idea of a four day work week could get more normalized, hey, at least we could have another day of our lives on this earth where we are just like, chained to the machine of production we'd have one more day to watch our stories play with our dogs play our instruments play our games just do things that make us feel less dead inside so i think stuff like this is is important um just how many non-brits get british comedy like the commonwealth country so ryan that's a really good good question i think a lot of americans Growing up, it was almost like the weird, cool thing, I feel like, in America to like British comedy. Even from like a really young age, I remember, yeah, I remember being like elementary and middle school, and it was like, you got Monty Python or you didn't. You know? Um, Are you the kind of served was a pretty big one. Oh, yeah. I remember like in college getting into like Peep Show or even like the original Office. Um, yeah. And then, and then especially, I feel like one of the big litmus tests in like college and after college age for me was like, do you get down with the mighty boosh? You know, do you, do you enjoy the, the, those, those gentlemen? Um, so yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm very kunk pilled right now. So I'm very about the British comedy. Hours on full pay may not be possible for every employer. Why not? But with many companies finding it hard to attract staff and pay higher. I just like the cool dude Cal too said, it's funny, isn't it? For wages, could this four day week be a solution? and help with the UK's long running problem of low productivity. I think this trial will be a game changer in terms of momentum in the UK toward a four day week. And I'm hopeful that it is going to spur more government uh, interest in this uh, at all levels of government um, and uh, more experimentation and some support for companies who want to go forward. How to get the right work-life balance. Fewer hours on full pay won't become mainstream anytime soon, but this trial suggests there are alternatives to the traditional five-day week. I, I want to assume every other employee is either at the pub just getting absolutely ripped on Friday and Linda's just picking up trash, exercising, visiting the dead. And they're either sleeping or gaming or just getting aggressively ripped. Um, Wasteland Blue says Catastrophe is the best recent British comedy. Catastrophe is great. I'm a big Sharon Horgan stan. Uh, I, I think I'd probably die for her. Um, how about everyone in the chat say one person you would die for that you've never met? Um, Sharon Horgan might be a person I've never met that I would maybe die for. Maybe don't say that. That's kind of grim. Um, hey, like the stream if you want. Um, um, Rero Naroro said, any videos maybe on the Banshees of Sharon since we were talking about friendship? That's a really good, um, that's, yeah, that's a really good question. We probably won't on the channel just because movie stuff's been doing really poorly. I would love it if we could make a video about the Banshees of Sharon and friendship and people would watch it. I think you all probably would because you're great, but I don't know if the numbers would be that good. So that would suck. Um, but I mean, I think, yeah, I think the, like for me, one of the best parts of that movie is that question of like, is it better? And I think this relates to the work stuff. Is it more important to spend our life producing things of value, even if that's like art and things that are meaningful or to like fuck around at the pub? Um, and what's the, what's the value difference there? Yeah. Um, all right. Like, Tiny says, oh yeah, go ahead, Henry. Sorry. There's that question of like utility as far as like, what am I even doing with my relationships? And like, is it even fucked up to lens it this way? Or yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and I listened to a couple of interviews um, with uh, Martin McDonough where he talked about that and talked about like even in his own life, like navigating that tension. So um, I know that's not a full video. Outright Tiny said, love how Burns just went from laughing the hardest at Linda in the graveyard to blatantly saying we have no hope for the world in our lifetime. 
<laughs> you know, outright tiny, I contain multi multitudes. But I, I vacillate. I have a certain level of hope, but sometimes that hope is tempered by reality. It's called dialectics. Um, Adam said, this is why Linda is in management. Um, we're talking about British comedy. Julia just finished some weekly work. And yes, Julia, you finished work to come here. And I was talking about where, oh, people are talking about who they die for. Don't, oh, don't say me. Don't die for Slavoj Zizek, guys. He's getting kind of annoying these days. Hulk Hogan, that would be sick. Colbert, Colbert is a sweet man. Brennan Fraser, another sweet man. Um, yeah, someone brought up Olivia Coleman going from Peep Show to Oscars. That's really crazy. JB Smoove, Jen for John. Yes, I think that's just the winning answer. We should all be ready to die for JB Smoove. And I know you said smooth, but I think it is. Is it, is it, is it smooth or smooth? Is it? I don't know. But JB Smooth from um, Curb Your Enthusiasm and many other things. Oh, yeah, I would die for him. David Byrne. Yeah, John Waters. John Waters is pretty cool. Um, no one's allowed to die for me. Please don't. Patrick Stewart's cool. Although he's very old. So there you go. Um, <laughs> Paul said, tip your Linda, everybody. John Oliver. Yeah, I haven't watched the new Oliver this week. Smooth. Yeah, thanks, Devil's Advocate. Um, I'm glad that it is smooth and I wasn't just saying that in a weird way. Kevin Klein. I heard some, I feel like I heard Kevin Klein's kind of a dick. I don't want to ruin anyone's thing. We've talked about that. Um, someone said, I die for Jesus. You don't have to because he died for you. Someone said, Dave Grohl. I don't know if anyone saw this. Dave Grohl the other day spent 12 hours cooking barbecue for unhoused people in Los Angeles during a storm. Um, fuck me if that's not really cool that he did that. I'm not, I'm not maybe the biggest like Foo Fighters head. I'm not yeah. a big like hard alternative rock guy but seems like a real mensch. So someone said Paul Rudd. I would have died for Paul Rudd before I saw Ant-Man and the Lost Quantum Mania. Um, Paul said, curious, what do you find annoying about Zizek? So I was actually talking to a friend about this yesterday, not a friend who's in my house right now because there's no friend in my house. Um, but Zizek has written some really important books. Um, if anyone's ever read, I know some of you had, so I'm not trying to say this in a dickish way. If any of you have read my book, which you should steal on the internet if you want to read it, I talk about Zizek in that book. Some of the ideas in there are indebted to him. I just think in recent years, he just like repeats his own ideas in lazy ways. And then recently has gotten into some of these really boring, like woke conversations or whatever. Um, someone said, I wish chatting on YouTube live was better. Do, um, John, do you mean like structurally? Or do you mean that we're all not a good enough chat for you? Um, what do we have wisecrack without the green bros? Now the green bros are, are our Antifa su super soldiers. They're the Antifa super soldiers of this. Kevin says Dave Grohl's a genuine cool person. He's also the best Nirvana drummer. I mean, he's definitely the best musician from Nirvana for sure. Um, my book's name is, um, guys, I forgot it for a second. Oh, it's called Kierkegaard and the Matter of Philosophy, a Fractured Dialectic. Um, please steal it. The fuckers at that press have not given me money in so long. They have not given me so long. Yes, my nickname is Michael Steal My Book Burns. Um, it was on LibGen. You could download a PDF of it. And I think Lib LibGen went down. But it's on most of the uh, things. Let's see. Someone said, I wish we could reply to each other easier. Yeah. They should They should make chat better here. I'll, I'll call Mr. YouTube and ask. Um, someone said I would 100% push Diedrich Bader out of the way of a speeding bus. Yes. I would save Diedrich... Bader just for his line deliveries in the movie Office Space. Um, like when he says, like, fucking A, man, talk that way around my job, you might get your ass kicked. And then when he says with a million dollars, he would do two chicks with one time, two chicks in one time. Um, let's watch his other four day work week video from Yahoo, which I think won't get us banned. Yahoo Finance. It might be bad though. But let's now. see show that for many companies, this really is a viable option, that employees are, are much better off, they value their jobs more, and they're able to maintain productivity through a kind of work reorganization process that they go through for two months before the trials. Thanks for being here. Thanks for liking the stream. And even if we don't get to 666 today, the Dark Lord's always with us. Starts getting rid of a lot of dysfunctional cultures around meetings, distractions, and so forth. So um, I think partly we just need to spread the word that this is a, a viable way to work. That is pretty crazy that productivity wise, and again, we don't care about productivity, but we care about our bosses thinking that we're being productive, so they make us work less. 
the fact that productivity was either the same or just improved. Pretty wild. There must though be a downside, right? Not everyone is continuing. Who's this prick? There must be a downside. Why does he have to be like that? That's some real snitch behavior. Continuing. I know I'm skeptical, but there has to be some downside to shifting. There's no downside to liking the stream if you haven't yet. Sorry, guys. I hate myself. Well, you know, hardly, almost nobody is not continuing. Let me just say that. Yeah. In, in our first two trials, nobody told us they were, weren't continuing. I think Michael, it was about the same, maybe a little bit more. Also, if you're in the chat, let me know. Do you Would you like Friday better for a Wisecrack Live Day than Thursday? I'm curious. Like maybe one or two out of the 61. Partly it's a self-selection bias, right? These are companies who opted to do this, presumably because they thought they could make it work and almost all of them did make it work. This doesn't mean that any random company could suddenly succeed with this. Anyone else notice how Julia set her Zoom background? So we see, I think four, maybe five awards with her name on them behind her. I, I, I respect it. Listen, I respect it. There are, there are, um, some companies that are burning their workers out, they can't ask them to do five days work in four days. Uh, healthcare comes to, to mind there. For those, you're going to have to hire new people on that fifth day. But if they don't do something about the way they're overworking and burning out their workers, you know, they're a big cost to that too. So I think ultimately it this can be viable for all companies. It may just take us a while to get. Someone says, what's Hoodie's guy opinion? What's his opinion on what? Just ask a question. There. Yeah, and this study, of course, took place in the UK. And when you talk about it potentially happening over here in the US, do you see it working here? And why do you think? This lady sounds kind of drunk. I'm not trying to be mean, but this lady in, in red sounds like she's slurring as if she had two glasses of Pinot Grigio for lunch. Maybe we have seen a resistance here in the US when it comes to a four day work week. Well, we've already done and finished one trial in the U.S., which was a huge success, which with very similar findings. We released those reports in December. It was about half the size of the U.K. We started another one, August, uh, excuse me, in October of 2022, and we're finishing that next month, and then we'll be starting another. So there are plenty of companies in the U.S. that are beginning to do this, and uh, you got to uh, lick the stream, so guys. And one interesting thing is, although most of these companies are white collar companies, professionals and tech and so forth, we have restaurants, healthcare, we have manufacturing, construction. So like restaurants, especially I've never worked in manufacturing or construction. If anyone has, let us know. I mean, it seems like it'd be pretty easy to do like four day work weeks in the service industry because and a lot already do. You just do overlapping shifts. You are seeing companies across the board that are act outright tiny says, I would like more wisecrack live. I'll tell you this outright tiny. It's, it's something that we're, we're considering that we're talking about. I think we're aware that if we want to keep this, the shit rocking, we might have to do it twice a week, but thank you for being here. Thank you for licking the stream. Um, obviously, you know, membership, Patreon, sending me bags of money, sending Henry bags of money. Um, and also trying to kill me and two friends in L.A. tonight. Things of that nature. Actually implementing this successfully. Wanted to get your thoughts before we go on Amazon employees outright rejecting what Andy Jassy, their CEO, has said. Come back to the office three days a week. There are 15,000 on a Slack channel complaining about this, an internal petition. What do you make of that rejection of three days a week, given that they already laid off 18,000 workers and where are we headed in terms of returned office? Are we going to plateau about that 50% mark? I'm just curious what she says about this. I know it's not really what we're talking about, guys. Let's just see. I can't predict that, but I do know that the resistance that many workers have to going back into the office is also part of what is creating more pressure for a four day week because people are burned out. They're stressed out. We the are. two day weekend Julia, is not we enough. Are. And companies need to recognize that. People worked really it's hard through the pandemic, but it was extremely stressful. And it, it's not clear to me why some of these companies are taking such a hard line on, on getting people back into the office when it's pretty clear a lot of people prefer at least a hybrid with only a couple of days uh, on prem, as they say. It's pretty interesting, interesting to see how that wraps up. That guy up just sounded drunk too. Hold on. Listen to the way he says interesting. 
He's like, this should be interesting. Listen. Should be interesting, interesting to see how that wraps up. I'm going to do it once more. Guys, they're drunk. The I'm... I'm 100% sure that the Yahoo Finance hosts here are actively drunk on camera, and I really like it. Here we go again. When it's pretty clear, a lot of people prefer at least a hybrid with only a couple of days ready, guys. Uh, on prem, as they say. It should be interesting to see how that wraps up and how you're testing. And he goes, it should be see how that wraps up. He's like doing the eyes thing, like when you're drunk and you're like, get it together, get it together goes here in the United States. So please come back once you've fully conducted that. Juliet Shore from Boston College. Great once to have you. Once you fully conducted that. that. <laughs> Guys, I think I'll stop. Stop playing. Wouldn't it be cool um, if you could film I, yourself? I think like, I think please. I now love Yahoo, guys, because Yahoo is the only channel that lets people get get drunk on the channel. Like that's very fun. Um, Adam H said, Mike and Henry, how many days a week do you guys work? I mean, I work five days a week. Um, Henry, I know you you do some free. I think you freelance all over. How do you do? You work five days a week, Henry, or do you balance it in different ways? It, it you don't have to speak from, if you don't want to. Yeah, it varies from week to week. Uh, sometimes I'm working like every day in a week. Sometimes I'm not working. Uh, sometimes uh, it's hard because I have to say sometimes I'm working five days a week at a separate location. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm not working at all during a week in terms of traveling, but I am like editing something from home. So mm -hmm. it's it's inconsistent, but yeah i'd say like it's a bit of a struggle because like i do work maybe four i'd say four days a week like a four-day work week would probably average out if i were to take my hours and look at it that way but i mean some days i don't wake up till like you know 10 uh those are days though where i might be working from like 3 p.m to 10 p.m or something like that um yeah 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 it's a little all over um yeah i know and i'll be completely honest with everyone I always work five days a week, but I have like some weeks where, you know, I work every day, but maybe I can like stop working a little bit earlier because I'm just in a good place. But I have other weeks, to be honest, where I work full days, Monday through Friday, and then maybe Sunday we'll do like a few hours to catch up. And then sometimes I'll work every day in a week, but by like... I mean, it's editing work, so it may be uh, two to three hours or three to four hours or four to five hours like each day, and it feels kind of mm -hmm. like it's at a manageable pace. Yeah. I feel um Gary Busey official. I agree that GZIC article was, was really weird and kind of dumb. Yeah, and you got to lick the stream, everyone. Continue to lick the stream. Luck the strom. Um, it's really important for us um, if you lad the stram. So continue to lad the stram. We're here. This is um, Wisecrack Live. Um, wisecrack what is work oh go ahead henry just the the last thing on that work week like uh, aside from the skepticism and stuff is i don't know i have a question as to the shape the the shifting nature of like what kind of jobs are in the economy especially like with gig workers and like more contract and like less w2 work being prevalent uh just is the four-day work week as it's conceived in these studies something that's going to become something of a a corporate carrot to keep keep uh, pushing the endeavor uh, well past mm -hmm. expiration date for keeping people like incentivized into like organizing labor in this like corporate structure. Because yeah. we have the tools to just like change labor laws and wage laws to where like everybody mm -hmm. could be like sustaining themselves on part time work already. Uh, it's just mm -hmm. a, mat a matter of like reimagining what like part time work means. Yeah, and it's also the issue, and this is you know the comparison between the U.S. and Europe that. When you don't need a full-time job for your healthcare, that opens up the possibility of yes. I think, more flexible options in terms of part-term, or sorry, part-time work. Um, and definitely, guys, keep breaking the stamp. It means a lot. Helps us a lot if you if you break the stamp. Um, Adam H said, "Do you think that represents the normal time frame of work for YouTubers?" No, I think a lot of people, Adam, who who work on YouTube and make content, work a lot. Um, I think there's a yeah. reason that there's so many videos and so many discussions of like burnout and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I think people work a lot. I think, I mean, now here, I'll be really blunt guys. People have left Wisecrack over the years. People I like very much. And the reason they have left for the most part is burnout. Um, I don't want to like speak too much to people's lives, but I feel like it's okay to say, I'm not going to name names, but yeah, people who, who worked at Wisecrack, who liked working here, like what we do, hit points where they were just like, I got to get out of here. This is too much. So. There you go. I feel having worked for YouTubers both like in a W2 like studio style and just as a contractor, uh, 
yeah, uh, Wisecrack has been has been more fair in terms of like I was definitely like in a studio where like the forty hour work week was still pushing like way more work than anything that like a contract uh, editing position would pay or even ask for. So uh, the YouTube the YouTube average is pretty bad as far as like people getting burned mm-hmm. out. Yeah, and I think we try. I would say at least at Wisecrack we're very conscious of that on our individual team and we're not monsters and we're all, you know, members of the army. So yeah, I don't know. Um, I think, yeah, someone said, I want to work for wisecrack. I mean, you probably don't, uh, but we like your support, but yeah. Um, um, Ab- Abinov said, are gig workers entitled to insurance stateside? No, definitely not. Nope. Definitely not. Definitely, definitely, definitely not. Um, if yeah, not but, for just the complete lack of benefits, I would not mind my kind of like contract position. But like there mm-hmm. is a precariousness to like my health care and my housing that like forces me to kind of always have a bit of like a work search dread on my mind. Yeah. What do you think? What's so fucking funny? I told you to stay still. God damn it. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, so let's see. We have I don't know. Do you want do you want to do the animation video, Henry? Yeah, it's it's a it's a change of tone for a moment. Okay, right, cool. Um, and guys, I just want to note that if you don't like this video, it is Henry's fault. Um, write to your congressman and say fire Henry if you don't like this. Oh no! Um, don't give any context. Just write a letter to your congressperson that just says fire Henry with no other context. Um, wait, so set this video up for us, Henry. So Corridor Crew, they're a, they're a YouTube channel that they do VFX breakdowns and reacts. Uh, pretty fun stuff. Uh, I do enjoy the channel. I am subscribed to them. They dropped this video recently where they they displayed a sort of like AI rotoscoping technique. Uh, and they're, they're kind of selling it as a, a revolutionary way to animate things. And that caused a bit of like a internet controversy as far as like this past week on Twitter for me. Uh, so I just brought this up to uh, see how people in the chat felt about it and what you feel about it, Michael. Hell yeah. So let's watch the, some of this. We might just watch all this. We might watch this. And little Harris, we're not totally sure. But yeah, let's go. Um, if you could film yourself, you could turn into anything you want, like a cartoon character. But what if this could just be a means of capturing performance and you can visualize whatever your imagination wants afterwards? This kind of no limits creativity is only accessible to films or animations with multi-million dollar budgets. But it's part of our humanity to try to visualize things that don't exist. Like let's talk about traditional 2D animation, cartoons. The most creatively- If I get murdered today, guys, I think Letter W did it. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. The liberated medium is also the least democratized. It takes incredibly skilled people drawing every single frame of your movie to make it happen. But I think we came up with a new way to animate, a way to turn reality into a cartoon. That's crazy. It's one more step towards true creative freedom, where we can easily create anything we want. Whoa. I mean, this is interesting, too, because I, you know, reading a lot this week about why, um, why Ant-Man looked like shit in a lot of ways and looking at the way in which animators get treated is just so bad right now. And I think that sometimes like there's this sense in which, with with animation we want to just jump on you know mcu looks like shit whatever da, 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 da. but it's less a quality of animation question and more just a labor question in terms of yes these you know these studios making a bunch of people all over the world do little parts of a thing on a condensed timeline for not enough money well then of course it's gonna look like shit but There's that's a- yeah. Yeah. There's a James Cameron interview where he's talking about the VFX on Avatar 2. And he brings up that, like, people who worked on Avatar 2 also worked on the Marvel movies. And it isn't that, like, you know, you're hiring lazy animators or anything like that. It's a matter of, like, time and, like, if you can be meticulous and, like, put the work in over a period of time or if you're just getting rushed. For sure. Um, Nelson needs to be reminded what this is. Do you mean this video? Nelson, I think. Um, Nelson, we're watching a video called Did We Change Animation Forever? That's about new technologies and animation. Um, Yeah, right? I don't know. We'll just keep watching it. If you have more questions, Nelson, just ask them. So how do we do this? How do we turn a video into a cartoon? 
Well, we've been making a series of videos where we experiment with AI image processing. This is similar to AI image wow. generation, but in our case, we are transforming images rather than generating them from scratch. So one of the newest pieces of technology is a machine learning process known as diffusion. At its core, the diffusion process lets a computer generate an image from noise, much Whoa. like how we imagine an image from an ink blot or looking at clouds. This is, this is really cool. That's all I'm gonna say thus far is this is really cool. If we take a picture we already have and we put a little bit of noise on top, we can have the computer clear up that noise while drawing Whoa. in new details that weren't there before. It's a lot like looking at a picture and squinting your eyes and trying to imagine you're looking at something What's else. What's up, Professor Puffin? If you squint a lot, well, what you're looking at becomes really fuzzy, and you can imagine that you're looking at something different. So current technology can do this, amazingly, with one image. So why haven't what? we seen it applied to video? Shouldn't we be seeing mind-blowing visuals all over the internet? Fortunately, the moment people tried applying this to video, everything fell apart. Because the first step oh, yeah, in the process weird. requires us to noise up our image. Every That was scary. Like, the images they're showing right now looks like what you would imagine it would look like if you did drugs and it went poorly. So that's intense. Um, someone said beer goggles in the chat. Yeah. Again, thank you for being here. It's Wisecrack Live. Yes, former President James Buchanan is in the chat. Um, please like the stream if you haven't already. You know all this stuff, though. You know all this stuff. Also, um, if you are a, a patron and you are at the patron level where you get access to philosophy office hours, this is a, a video I make once a month right now, hopefully more soon, where I respond to questions, talk about stuff. You can drop them um, both on Patreon and on the Discord server. Uh, I'm going to film a new one very soon. And I think um, you, you've you never seen this person, but I have a friend in town who has a PhD in philosophy and works on really interesting stuff. And I'm going to see if this person will jump on with me and do that video and respond to some questions. So, you know, it's sort of like a classic two philosophers, one cup scenario. So if you if you want to get more bang for your buck, um, you know, feel free to ask some questions. If you are at that Patreon level, if you're not at that level and you're like, oh fuck, that sounds cool, you can jump on. It's the ten dollar level. If you've never even heard of that, that's a thing that happens. Uh, I make a video. People ask questions about videos, philosophy, life, other things, and I and I hang out in a very off the cuff fashion and talk about it. So you can check that out if you want. Um, Cool. Let's. Ooh, Thornback's writing product copy. You only have two products to go. Hell yes. Let's go. Okay. Let's watch some more of this because this is crazy. I want to see. Even though this part of the video is making me feel like I'm on drugs and it's going poorly. Single frame and being different, and the video gets super flickery. The very nature of this text seems to make it impossible to ever work with video. And well, I nearly gave up on using it. But Dean here at the studio kept experimenting, and he showed that with a little bit of VFX problem solving this might be something that we could actually Whoa. overcome. It was at the time that Dean and Fenner went out and made that Spider-Verse short, and I set off on a personal quest to use this tech to enable me to make my very Oh yeah, waking life anime. is a good thing. <laughs> so it was time to Sherlock Holmes our way through this and engineer a solution to this flickery problem. And the first clue was Jurassic Park. <laughs> they look like elves. Oh, because they're Lincoln Zelda. Ago, a user on YouTube named Hops uploaded an experiment he had processed Jurassic Park Whoa. to look like low poly Zelda. And he used an interesting <sighs> new technique to noisify the image. And he had achieved excellent. Whoa, the Jeff Goldblum one looks really cool. Oh my God. Look at the eyes, just, just right to the right there, or to the left. Oh, wow. Yeah, th those look weird. It's like half sunglasses, half eyes, like some sort of demon. Just like wow. details out of a nightmare. Yeah, that is crazy. Um, also, again, I feel bad every time I, uh, you know, talk about the Patreon stuff. I know that it costs some money, but but we do lots of free stuff too. So we'll keep making more free shit, I promise. Excellent results. So I'll explain. Every time you process an image, the noise that you put on top changes. Therefore, the forms in the image get changed. Sometimes the Laura Dern or Zelda one in this, it's certain flashes, it looks like Owen Wilson. Maybe that's just in my head, but I've seen it a few times where it literally looks like Owen Wilson. Every frame. If we freeze that noise, things become a lot more solid in the image, but now it kind of feels like the image is okay. moving underneath yeah, a still, weird warp layer. I feel like if you have like 
epilepsy or something, you should not look at this. And the details stay inconsistent. So the new trick used in that little Jurassic Park video is simple. If we can turn noise into an image, let's just reverse an image back into the noise it would have come from. Literally just do it backwards. Therefore, the noise is no longer randomly changing every frame, nor is it locked. If the two frames are nearly the same, so is their fuzzy, noised up versions. Huh. And therefore, they get interpreted in a similar way. So we had one piece to the puzzle solved. No more random- Has anyone ever solved a puzzle this cool in their lives? Like, do any of you feel like that's a thing you've been, I just, yeah, when people, people that are able to solve technical problems like this, I feel like live in another realm and have a different type of brain than I do. Um, letter W says, where is skip intro and why is he not covering what this means for TV? He'll get there. He'll get there. Noise on our end. I tried to make my video look like a cartoon and every frame was being drawn with a different cartoon style. Oh, I was going to let everyone know too. I can maybe remember to drop the links, the links, um, the link in the chat. I did an interview last week, um, that went on YouTube for this channel content for creators. Uh, where I sat on this couch in this nice studio and talked for an hour about Wisecrack and how he makes stuff and express my opinions on a lot of things. Um, you might want to see it. There's a link to it on our Twitter as well. If you are on Twitter and don't follow Wisecrack on Twitter, please do. Um, but I don't know. If you like me talking about stuff and, and are curious to hear me giving some more, uh, I don't know, long answers to questions about YouTube and Wisecrack and content and politics and shit like that, you can check that video out. So just letting you know. And it's a fun channel. Uh, the guy who runs it is a really good interviewer. Probably and yes, Michael, it was a casting couch immediately after that. I was, uh, I had sex, I can't. Problem just to encounter another problem. Dead end? Well, no. Because around this time, style models were becoming a thing in the stable That's diffusion scary. space. A person named Nitrosock started creating some amazing diffusion models built to convert your image into one specific style. So then it dawned on us. This was the key to eliminating the style flicker. Like imagine- the channel is called Content for Creators, I'm pretty sure. Um, content for Creators, where's the link? I'll maybe find it in a second and, and, and try to post it. Imagine telling 100 different people to draw a cartoon dog. You're going to get 100 different dogs back. Now imagine giving everyone a character style sheet saying, draw Thank a you, cartoon Melo dog Joe. exactly like this. The images are going to look a lot more similar. So we had to train our own model specifically on only one style that we wanted to replicate. Another big step forward, Whoa. but it only uncovered another new problem. On tests I performed on myself, the features on the face were still changing and jumping all over the place. So the idea hit us. We made a video where we trained ourselves into a diffusion model so that we could tell- I'm like half getting all of this, guys. I'm half getting it. Um, someone said, what is this program called? What's this channel again, Henry? Uh, this pro, uh, the channel's corridor crew, uh, they're using stable diffusion to, uh, to do all this, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Wow. An epic fantasy story. Why not do that here? I trained a model to not only replicate a specific style, but also oh, yeah. next week we're doing a fully animated wisecrack live. Um, check it out. It's going to be great. Now we don't have the money for that. We know a character, me. I traded on images of me wearing the same clothes on the same green screen background that I was using for my test sequence. And suddenly, boom, everything locked in. The consistency between oh, helpful box was things hugely sure. improved. Well, almost. It still wasn't quite perfect. But we're VFX artists who have worked with crappy video files. Surely, we must have a tool in our arsenal to deal with light flickering. So we applied the deflicker plugin in DaVinci Resolve, and we set it to remove flickering light Whoa. and it was that simple suddenly we were there it was working that looks so good a consistent moving emotive cartoon character oh kayla thank you i'm glad you found it sorry i was gonna try and there's just a lot going on i would have gotten too distracted and it's all just driven with video of us on a green screen Whoa! that's really crazy to make stuff that looks that good from live action green screen oh, footage man. I think we've cracked a workflow here for getting something that looks like a cartoon and it's pretty bonkers. It's working, you know? Yeah. I think we could do maybe a couple more experiments, but it's like ready to rock. I think Nico has figured out the key to creating a consistent character. So now it was time to make that anime that I've always wanted to make. Because as you've seen on the channel, we have our anime videos, anime fidget spinners, anime self-driving cars, anime baseball, but they're all filmed Whoa. for real because we don't run an animation studio and it's very hard to do so <laughs> these days. 
So I've had this idea forever. Anime, rock, paper, scissors. What is the ultimate rock? The intensity around that, like anime, rock, paper, scissors. Nick's been doing video production professionally for 20 years, loves Corridor Crew. Awesome. Um, well, thank Henry for putting his video up here, guys. It's very fun. And of course, it's still not perfect, but you know what's perfect? Nothing's perfect. Um, good stuff here. Okay, thanks for being again. Wisecrack Live. We'll, we got a little bit left in the tank, so let's watch a little bit more of this. Paper, scissors game. Two twin princes born at the same time, equal claim to the throne, and it must be decided that day that the king has died. And rock, paper, scissors must happen. So he wrote this short film. The next step is to treat it like a cartoon, which means recording the dialogue first. So Nico, who are you playing today? I'm playing Philip, and I have no idea how I'm gonna, what voice I'm gonna use. I figured that we would start in saying like, Ugh. yeah, just go through a few lines, and then like we'll throw a filter or two on it to help you. A fun job. Seems like a fun little, fun little worlds these guys have had. Um, bye bye to the chaps who do in between frames. Yeah. So for people who know stuff like this, I imagine as well, if if the technology they're using here, I mean, it's like another automation question, right? Like we automate yeah. things so that we can do them without as many people and as many processes, which is good, but we live in a system where that means less people have those jobs. Um, Henry's is good or bad. I, or both. I both like it is, it is bad. The sense of like displaced labor, which is why like, I don't, I don't dislike AI technology. It's just the use and implementation of it in our current economic structure. That's really bad. Um, I do have questions about like like what's worth making as far as like we have this technology to make anything and a lot of like AI technology feels like it's just making action figure sandbox nonsense to me. Um, but I think that's a separate question from like the economic one and the, the like ethical one regarding like its hmm. economic uh, use. Yeah. Um, Brando in the chat said, I like Corridor Crew. I like their attitude to innovation. But what Nico said in this video about democratizing animation industry is basically tech, tech bro brain rot. Yes. Really a bad take there. Uh, yeah, talking about like the whole action figure sandbox mentality as far as like what people have been making with AI technology so far. Again, like I don't really feel what they're making looks like anime, rock, paper, scissors. Like it doesn't look like anime. It does look like a, an AI assisted like improvement to like not necessarily improvement, but modified rotoscoping, which is mm -hmm. a technology that's been around, but they are making it faster. So, like when I saw this, I was a bit taken. I, I, I cringe a bit at the sort of the sort of tech bro revolutionary like kind of gassing up they're doing. But I do think this is kind of showing uh, an incremental step towards uh, an animation yeah. revolution. Is is the full video at the end the short? Uh, I, if this is the video I'm thinking of, they do they do show it in the back half. Here, I'm gonna skip ahead and see if we can find that. Oh, there's their ad. We don't want to watch their ad. We have to watch our own ad sometimes, you know? Let's see. Uh, because, yeah, they do go into a pretty heavy tech breakdown, but that's also okay. kind of the appeal of the channel. Yeah, which I love. Let's watch this final product for now just because we, we, we got – time is not on our side. Um, but you guys, this is on Quarry Archer. You should watch the whole video. Yeah, damn right you are. So I think this is their premiere. A full video, but this is enough for us to That's pretty sick, though. It feels like a real anime in real life. <laughs> and that's what it is. There's like all sorts of wacky AI jank that creeps in, but... Oh, that's fun. Well, I'm going to check out the full thing later. I think you all should, too. Um, okay, guys. So, let's see. Yeah, Vox agrees with Henry. Who doesn't? Um, let's see... All right, cool. So I think we're going to start wrapping things up today. A few things. Um, we'll be back here next week for the fully animated 3D edition of Wisecrack Live sponsored by Meta. Um, you are going to have to order the newest Meta headset to see it. Um, but please do that. Get a new credit card and go into credit card debt if you need to. Um, we'll be back for that. We're excited about that next week. We have some good videos coming down the pipeline. So if you haven't been regularly keeping up with our main videos, please do that. Um, 
you know, we always say these things, but um, thank you for being members of the channel. Thank you for being on Patreon. But if you're just here, um, that's also fine. I still love you either way. Um, but yeah, we'll be back next week. And if anyone in the meantime does have questions for philosophy office hours, if you're on that level of patron, please post them. But I think we're going to call it here for now, friends. So thank you so much. Thank you to Henry. Thank you for me being home alone in my apartment. Uh, thank you for all your support. Um, guys, it's my friend Dave. And I think uh, I'm going to make him do a video with me later about philosophy stuff. So you might get to see that. Um, uh, yeah. And we won't forget about the Wisecrack Live email address. I'm going to try to go make that now or now-ish. Um, and Graham, yes, they did not ask me to guest host the Daily Show. I guess they just didn't have my email or phone number or know who I am. So there you go. Um, Jagish Colby, no, it sounds like a really good uh, double feature. And yeah, if anyone has recommendations or what are you, feel free to drop those in the chat. Um, friends, comrades, neighbors, fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, we will see you next week. Thanks again to producer Henry. Thank you to all of you. We'll see you then. See you next Bye. week. Bye. Bye. Thank you.